welcome, Devil Sniper here, and this is episode number four, season number six of West Ham United. And we're going to go straight into the World Championship qualifiers. As you can see from the table in the top right hand corner, Poland are just a few points behind us, so we really need to dig out a win. Possibly two wins for the next two games, but it's not going to be easy. We're playing Portugal, and we're away to Portugal, and we haven't had the best run at all. I mean, we were knocked out in the semi final. Of the Confederations Cup by Spain, completely outplayed on Legendary, absolutely outplayed. But such is my determination, such is my stubbornness to hopefully try and break the Legendary hold upon me by FIFA. I decided to play against Portugal and Legendary. I decided to play against Portugal and Legendary because I'm suicidal. And then I saw Cristiano Ronaldo and I really thought deep down, after six seasons, surely he should have retired by now. Please God, but no. They had an absolutely beastly side out. But we had a very, very strong side out. And a side that I feel can deliver three points. You look at the table. You know, two points above Poland. If we can at least pick up a victory here, our goal difference is going to harm us. Because we've only got plus three, which is a real shame. But we start off really brightly. Gibbs getting the ball in. Danny Wilbeck going for the header. Couldn't out-jump the centre-back. But we managed to pick up the ball with Walcott. He knocks it into Nathaniel Klein. As you know, we sold Nathaniel Klein to Juventus. He swings it in. And Danny Welbeck. Oh, the movement from him behind the defender, in front of the defender, and just heading it home nonchalantly after eight minutes. Gave me a real lovely feeling inside that we could take the game to Portugal, that we could deliver a result. And again, Danny Welbeck picking the ball up, being man-marked. But he turns his defender and strikes an unbelievable, venomous shot into that bottom corner after 16 minutes. And grandeur, delusion of grandeur set in. The game is going to be over, surely. We're walking in the park. Gardner, 22nd minute of the game, swings the ball in, off the bar. And I've got to say, in six seasons, I'm still yet to score from a direct free kick. That's really bad, I know. That's really bad. But never fear, never worry. As the corner comes in for Portugal, and I, I'm confused because it wasn't a handball. So I'm not in sure what the fringement was, to be honest, by Gardner. And I was very disappointed. And of all people to step up is Cristiano Ronaldo. We all know what he's going to do. And yes, he delivers. He peerlows me. And I knew he was going to peerlow me. But I still dived to the right. I mean, Butland still dived to the right. Why did he do that? Surely he knew deep down that Cristiano Ronaldo would peerlow him. It's ridiculous. Unbelievable. Audacious, gracious, magnificent. Everything that Cristiano Ronaldo unfortunately is. But Nelson Oliveira drops the ball into one Mintinho. Is it one Mintinho? And he strikes the ball over the bar with a venomous shot. So we went in at half-time, hanging on for dear life, leading the game 2-1. But I still have faith in the boys. As much as we haven't done well in these championship qualifiers, I feel we can still qualify. We just need to dig deep. Dig deep as Andre Martins knocks the ball into Nelson freaking Oliveira. And with a wry smirk, Oliveira stabs me in the back after 56 minutes to make it 2-2. Knowing that he's just proved the manager that just sold him. Completely wrong that he should have kept him. But I still feel we got the better end of the deal. Destro and Gabby Adini are just magnificent. And Lamella, oh my days, oh my days, oh my days. But Jack Wilshere on the ball, on his right foot, surely, surely you can't put it wide. And he does. But the ball comes out to Garner. Great control by Garner, really, really good player. Knocks into Oxlade-Chamberlain. Oxlade-Chamberlain, into who? Danny, Welbeck, Danny, three goals. Welbeck after 81 minutes. And a lot of people are going to be sitting there and tapping away in the comments below. John, why did you not bring Welbeck to West Ham? Is that not a complete noob error? And unfortunately, I'm going to have to decline to reply because it could well be. He's in absolutely scintillating form. He plays so well. He's so agile. He's so pacey. His shot is unbelievable. He's dominant in the air. This could be a huge error on my behalf not to sign Welbeck, who I believe is 26 as well, so he's a perfect age. Perhaps you guys can comment in the uh, section to below if, if you feel that Bringing in Gabbiadini and Destro was a, it was an error. We should have actually gone for Welbeck. Who knows? But Wilshere sets us off 1-0 after 13 minutes against Norway at home. I decided to simulate this game just because I didn't want to overdose you with too much England content. Because if we do qualify, I will then overload you with England content. Especially in the World Championships. They will be fantastic episodes. I can't wait for them if we make it. And what am I saying if? We're winning 3-0. It no longer matters. Poland can't catch us up. It's done. It's dusted. We have just qualified. Which is magnificent. Unfortunately, Raheem Sterling 
who actually played the entire game with a, with a dodgy ligament, um, is out for five months. I can't help but feeling not substituted him might have added to that. Anyway, Batty is nearly fit. And we're going to go into a squad report. And Danny Barrera, he is an absolutely sensation goal, sensational goalkeeper. He really does remind me of Butland. It's it's so strange how he's he's he makes himself so big like Peter Schmeichel. It's it's just magnificent. Bruno Martins Indy is beautiful. Zimanski, he has five star skill moves. Five star skill moves for a left back. He's unbelievable. Sixteen years old, five foot nine, not the tallest, but he's going to be world. Class. That guy's going to be sensational. Paul Pogba, it's a privilege to bring him to West Ham. A player that, you know, was requested in season one, two, three, four, and even five. And it took us to season six to bring him in. Look at Tremble statistics. The guy is just a talent. Not gifted with the greatest pace, but the guy is a huge talent. An absolute huge talent. Rocker just keeps improving week in, week out. Miguel keeps improving week in, week out. We're seven million quid now. He's phenomenal. Mark Friend. Looks brilliant. Butland. Oh, look at his pace, his acceleration. He's just mental how good he really is. Ola Jean is looking pretty sexy. Kyle Walker, still solid as a rock. We won't worry about Carlos Tevez. He's going down a little bit. Shh, don't worry. Just just think pretty thoughts. Wilfred Saha starting to go down a little bit. Very unhappy. He's got to go in the winter. Look at Gabby Adini. Look at those statistics. They are unbelievable. His shot power is just mental. Kolka. By far the best centre-back on the game. Absolutely magnificent. Nikolai Tremel, the brother of Nicholas Tremel and Matthias Tremel, both doing well. Bassi's statistics are mental. He looks absolutely sensational. Eduardo is nearly edging towards that 80 rating. I can't wait for him to hit 80. It'll be so cool. That'll be such a great day when he hits 80. Callas still, what a centre-back. He's so powerful. It's ridiculous. Our boy, our legend, our talisman. Those statistics... Wow, 94 long shots, 92 shot power. He's just brilliant. Destro, a godsend, an absolute godsend. He may not be the quickest, but it's so nice not to have to rely on pace. And this guy has changed the way I play FIFA for the rest of my life. He forces me to do techers. Yes, me. I know you're all sitting there thinking, you can't do techers, John. We all know you can't do techers. You're the worst techers player in the techers world. And I agree. But wait till you see some of the footage I have with him. But now it's time for the Daily Jaffa. Do you like the new new background for the Daily Jaffa? I think it's pretty cool. And Filippo believes squad can win the treble. Filippo firmly feels West Ham will win the treble with the current crop of players the club has at this moment. When asked to make a statement, this is what Filippo had to say. We have so much depth and class at the club due to the gaffer. And I feel you'll see us make history this season. He also went on to, to, to talk about the younger players. Rocker and Miguel will play a huge part this season. I know they will score at least 25 goals between them. Whoa, that's interesting. West Ham fans get the chance to provide feedback to West Ham TV regarding the development squad player review to help the club provide the best and most creative episodes they can for the fans. And as always, if you have any stories, contact us at the Daily Jaffa on 0800 I Love This Career Mode. But... Can England win the World Cup with Locke at the helm? Welbeck hits top form. Danny Welbeck hit four goals in two games to help his country gain six points and place them in the World Cup. Or the World Championship. At one point, it looked like England would not even manage to make the World Cup. But Locke and his dedicated lads have turned it all around to finish on 20 points. With Portugal in first, only losing out on... Well, with Portugal only losing out on first place due to goal difference. If you like the new background to the Daily Jaffa, let me know in the comments below. If you still love the Daily Jaffa, please let me know in the comments below. I love creating strange little things from my head. I just love it. Absolutely love it. I hope you guys, guys really do love and adore it. But we're going to move into a game. And we're going to see the tank come home. West Ham are taking on Sunderland at Upton Park. Sunderland are in, in different form. Let's just hope West Ham can deliver the three points and the victory. We shall see. We shall see. I don't know about you guys, but I am pumped for this game. The boys are pumped for this game. Filippo with a dead serious look on his face. Butland looking stern with a point to prove. Let's just hope we can deliver. Let's just hope we catch him on a bad day. 
Lamella's playing. Destro's playing. Gabbiadini's playing. The boys look magnificent. Sunderland with the kickoff. Colbeck into Fletcher. Fletcher spreads the play out to Adams. Adams moves the ball back into Fletcher. And West Ham are looking a little bit shoddy to begin with. Given too much possession away. But McLean picks the ball up for Sunderland on the left-hand side. He's being monitored by Kyle Walker. Kyle Walker's just standing off him. Giving a little bit too much space. Catamon into Fletcher. Fletcher out to McLean. McLean with a fantastic ball in. A header down. No one's really marking him. And that looks like it's going to be offside. No, it's a penalty. Unbelievable. Szymanski, the 16-year-old youth player, has just given away a penalty. I can't believe that. And what a goal by Connor Wickham of all players after eight minutes to give Sunderland a real shock lead. The champions again look absolutely stunned. I'm still looking over the footage and I can't see what the actual infringement was. There was no clear hand ball. It didn't look like a foul to me personally, but I'm not the referee. As Ola John picks the ball up, 25, 30 yards out from the Sunderland goal. He knocks it to Filippo Bonaperti. He breaks past the defender and Filippo, as normal, brings the game back for the champions after 12 minutes to make it 1-1. Fantastic interlinking play there with Ola John. And the movement from Filippo Bonaperti is just sensational at this moment in time. He has to be the best player on the planet at this moment. If you agree, post in the comments below as Sunderland yet again break West Ham, but this time it is clearly offside. Great play there by West Ham United. It was Szymanski who pulled up late, but he played the offside trap perfectly and managed to uh, catch Fletcher offside. But Szymanski getting forward, knocking the ball inside to Destro. Destro trying to skill his way around the defender, around Katamol, but fails. The ball's knocked back to Pogba. Paul Bogba spreads the play out to Ola Jean. Ola Jean breaks in, gives the ball to Destro. Destro breaks into the box, pulls the trigger. And a huge save there by the Sunderland goalkeeper. And then there's a corner to West Ham United. Lamena plays it in. Great header there by Gabby Adini. And it's just over the bar. But it looks like the referee's awarded the penalty. And again, I can't see what the infringement's for. Gabby Adini got a fantastic head on the ball. And it was straight over the bar. But I don't think West Ham fans are going to... Uh, be too bothered as Destro steps up, strikes the ball home after 29 minutes to turn this game around for the champions. It's now West Ham United 2, Sunderland 1. It was a great start by Sunderland, but the champions have just upped the tempo, the pressure to absolutely batter them. Callas playing a nice ball forward, but it's been broken out. It's come back to Filippo. Filippo Bonaparte with a nice little skill, turns the ball inside to Ola John. Sunderland are there with Foreman. Foreman keeps the ball. He knocks it inside to Catamol. Catamol plays it back into Foreman. Sunderland are trying to come back into this game with Fletcher. Fletcher out to the right-hand side. But West Ham are just defending so well. Filippo and Callas are doing a great job in the first half. And the referee does blow the half-time whistle. West Ham stroll in, leading the game 2-1. With great performances so far from Destro and Gabbiadini. They really are an unbelievable handful. So to finish the episode off and tease you a little bit, I'm going to go into the youth squad review and we will catch up with how we've done with Sunderland in the next episode. Basically, it is Tremel, birthplace Dortmund, Germany, 17 years old, 5 foot 7 in height, left foot is his strong foot, his weak foot is only 2 star, his skill moves are 4 star, his position is right midfield, his work rates are medium attacking, low defensive. The picture is taken from the Port Vale game in the N Power Youth League Division 2. My personal thoughts, Tremel is a lad with a huge future in the game. He doesn't lack confidence for taking a risk and having a dig from 20 yards, 30 yards or even 40 yards. He has he, he has the ability to become a cult hero at West Ham for sure. And I, for one, am looking forward to seeing him progress this season. He will play a really, really important part this season. He is absolutely fantastic. He is so gracious. He's, his left foot is biblical. What we're going to do now is take a look at the actual West Ham United B team. As you know, they are playing in the N Power Youth League Division 2. So we're going to go into a squad. As you can see, Danny Barrera is in goal. We've got Stuart Perk, who is actually on our books at the moment. We haven't officially given him a contract. He's 15 years old, but we've got him on our books. We're going to have a little look at him, see how he progresses, how he does. And um, I'm, I'm sure he's going to be a very well-asserted fullback. As you see, we've got all the lads in there. We've got Mills, we've got Robinson, we've got Wabs. We've got Nikolai Tremel. We've got Matthias Tremel, we've got Drake, Jacob Tong, Antonio, is it Pifa, Pefa, who's also in there. So basically, as you can see, I'm going to show you a combination of clips from friendly matches, and we're going to conclude with the game against Port Vale. As you, he's just got so much ability. The boy is very fluent on the ball. He's very accomplished on the ball. He's very comfortable on the ball. Nothing phases him. He has a little bit of pace. 
he has a lot, a lot of confidence. I mean, not many people would take that shot on. Perhaps he should have gone for a finesse shot into the top corner, but such is his confidence and the power in that foot is unbelievable. He doesn't lack in the techers section, nor the passing. That is an absolutely world-class ball. That's not the sort of ball that we used to be we used to be seeing from Ole Jean. We haven't seen balls like that from Adrian or Isco. But, you know, in a, in a friendly match, he has the ability just to do it. Look at this. He teases defenders. He knows the defender's five, six yards off him. He teases him. He teases the midfielder. He runs against the defender again. He fakes to go one way, does a roulette, and then has the audacity to have a shot. Not the greatest shot in the world, I'm sure he'd admit that, but he's just such a confident player. Great pace at times. His acceleration is better than his pace. And again, trying to find that top corner. His foot is unbelievable, and he doesn't lack work rates or passion. Look at him getting in there on the fullback. Giving a fullback a real harsh reminder that he is about. And then he puts in a fantastic cross. Unfortunately, Rocker on this occasion doesn't outjump the uh, centre back. He does stick his elbow in his face, which I thought was fantastic. Look at him, he runs straight at the defender. Goes to try a nice little skill move, but the defender just pounds him. Because the defender all game had had to put up with him running at him. And he was getting a little bit annoyed. So he stuck him on his ass. But it doesn't phase our boy Tremble. Because Tremble stuck up. Stood up, took the free kick. Not the greatest free kick in the world, but what else? What can you do? But look at this. For work rates, determination, aggression, passion. Gets the tackle in. What's his first thought? Get forward, get forward, receive the ball, keep going. And then we accumulate in a fantastic finish with his biblical left foot. The lad is 17 years old. This kid is going to be fantastic. And rest assured, he's going to play a huge part in Season 6. Absolutely biblical.